you know, I just I love that Notre Dame program. I love their coaches so much. I love their players. You know, we try to recruit them all. They're 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 smart. They're gutsy. Um, they're fun loving. Um, so I really enjoyed that game. It was really enjoyable. Um, I love my team and I love my coaching staff too. So uh, <laughs> it was a good. I thought it was just a great representation of what college athletics is supposed to be. You're supposed to be a high level character, high character individual to represent this amazing conference on a stage like that. Um, your coaching staff is supposed to play by the rules, do things the right way, encourage your players, and lift people up, and both staffs do that. So in, in my opinion, um, if you just were like dropped on earth and said, what is women's college basketball all about, and you watch that game, that's what we want it, that's what we want it to look like. So I loved it. I thought it was a lot of fun. <coughs> um, I'm really proud of my players. I thought Carla did some, some gap attacks that, um, you know, some outsider hand finishes against um, a really incredible interior defensive team um, when we were stuck. You know, Carla, Carla got us unstuck. Kelsey got some really sweet dialed up threes. Um, the, the last two weren't so sweet, but um, <laughs> she said, I love how you stayed faithful with me. I was like, I, when would I ever lose face, faith in Kelsey Marshall? When would I ever lose faith in this child? Female, woman, sorry. Um, so a um, <laughs> lot of love, a uh, lot of celebration, um, but uh, you know, we're not, we don't, w you know, we came into this tournament being sick of the almost. I mean, that's really what we've been talking about, like the almost, this, this much, this six inches, and they hit a three in your face. Uh, Carla takes that away from maybe, and, they, and we win, almost. We've given up ORB uh, offensive rebounds, uh, threes against teams when we could have won the game, and we just grabbed the ball, almost. All these almost that we went through. And, um, you know, we was go not going to be an almost today. There was not going to be one. We were going to win. Okay, if you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll get the microphone to you. And if you're on Zoom, please use the raise your hand function uh, first on the left. Uh, Coach, I mean, you kind of alluded to – actually, I have two questions. First off, how'd your hair get so wet? <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you could describe the celebration. And then yeah. uh, secondly, you know, you kind of alluded to it. I it feels like you guys have been almost there, almost there. So what, what's just been the difference this, this week here in Greensboro? You know um, – Confidence is a funny thing, and, and I, I, I can take you guys back to the last time we played at Notre Dame, and we were still reeling from uh, North Carolina, had just shellacked us, and, and um, I, in the locker room after Notre Dame, I was like, guys, what's wrong? Like, I had more concern for my team. I wasn't mad at them. I wasn't um, disgusted with them. I was like, hey, like, who goes to North Carolina and goes to Notre Dame back-to-back, -back, two away top 15 games, and feels good about themselves? Very few teams do. And when we came back from, from that trip, we, we put the month of February and we put the logos of the teams and we plopped them on the calendar. I think if we were maybe four and seven, I don't know at that point. And we plopped the logos on. And so then we had the next game, maybe, I don't know, Florida State or something, and we won it and we just exited out. And then we'd, we'd s make that one game. We showed the, sh laid out the plan. I said, get us to 500 in the league, we're gonna be fine. And then we exit out one team. And then we'd show the remaining games and we'd beat that team and we'd exit out and we just sort of marched through with a mentality of we take care of business on these next two weeks. And then it was, uh, I think we had four games in eight days right after that. And um, did we win all of them? Something like that. But it was like doable. And I think that I just needed to, I needed it for myself, to be honest. Uh, I was questioning my coaching. They were questioning their abilities. We were questioning our communication. You know, questioning, not doubting, but just like, what's wrong, you know? And, um, and that little, that kind of conversation, we have a team that, First of all, I think as a staff, we, we allow ourselves to be very vulnerable with our team. When I screw up a playboy, I'm, 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 I want them to know that I know I screwed up. You know, I really want them to tell me what I did wrong. And we were very vulnerable in that moment, very vulnerable with each other, and a lot of sharing. And um, from that point on, I think we built ourselves back up. All right, here in the middle. Yeah, yeah Kelsey, um, you know, yesterday was kind of, you know, destiny game. Um, today in the fourth quarter, you know, you hit that three, you hit that. Um, that crucial free throw, what, what kind of got into you there down the stretch in those crucial moments? Um, you know, I just try to play the game possession by possession. Uh, I try not to think of what happened before. So uh, throughout the game, my team was looking for me, and I just try to hit the open shots, and that's what happened today. All right, we'll go to Zoom. Uh, Michelle Kaufman, Miami Herald, go ahead with your question. Hey, Katie and everybody, congratulations. Uh, it's going to be, Katie, your first time, Miami's first time playing for an ACC title. 
Um, can you just talk about what that means for the program to be playing in a championship game tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, we've had teams that, um, you know, we're a top four seed before, and we kind of had the, you know, two of the players are on my staff right now, Morgan Stroman and Shanice Johnson. We've been in positions before where we're a lot more favorable than this particular. I said we had a, we had some talented teams that could have just won, you know, two games and gotten to the finals, and, and we were in the, and um, we didn't. And this team is just slugging through the, the bracket, not walking. I mean, we were not spoiled. We are just tough as nails. Um, I think if you're a Miami Hurricane fan, um, we embody what what the U is all about. You know, we're, we're going to fight. We're going to show up. And we're, we're, you, you, we're not going to be an easy out for anybody. And and then at the same time, there's a lot of celebration and joy. So we're, we're a team that has deep, deep, deep roots. You know, a strong a strong storm's not going to blow us over. We're going to we're, we're going to hold. We're going to hold. We're going to hold. And we'll be there at the end. Can you talk about the locker room celebration you had been asked yeah, before? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what? It broke my heart. We won, and I ran, and I hugged my staff, and then I went straight to TV, and I didn't get to have any fun with my team. And after I did the TV, I looked around. The whole, no one was out there. And I said, where's my team? Where, where my, where's my family? And when I say family, I also want to say I have a huge family wedding today. My niece, which you guys see this 43 pin I have on my chest. It was my nephew, Philip Lutzenkirk, and that was uh, an All-American at Auburn in um, – we lost him in a car accident, and we have a huge foundation in Lutzi 43. Well, Philip's sister, Abby, which is like, I mean, that whole family is like my, my closest people. She's married, getting married today to, uh, she played soccer in Alabama, the tight end at Alabama, Merrill Forrestal. They're actually right now at the church <laughs> getting married, and it means everything to me, my family. But this team, I told them in the locker room after the game, I didn't tell them that was going on. Um, and I, yeah, I got emotional, and I said, you know, Abby's getting married today. They all know who Abby is, and uh, I'm not there, but I'm with my family, and I'm happy, and I want to thank you because I'd be really mad if, if I missed that wedding and we lost today. <laughs> so, uh, but there was a lot of water, a lot of celebration. I walked in, and I hadn't seen him. I hadn't, I hadn't had my hands on him at all after we won. Not, not one kid did I hug or celebrate with, so it was just a pylon and a bunch of water. I'm sure someone caught it on camera. Okay, our next question, Michelle Vopel. Go ahead. Um, yeah, uh, Michelle Vogel from ESPN.com. Congratulations, guys. I wondered if I could um, ask the, both the players to comment on something Coach Meyer talked about, which is those back-to-back -back losses with uh, North Carolina and, and Notre Dame. H how she said, you know, it, it was it was sort of a, a confidence issue a little bit. Then, can you guys talk about how you guys process that and the fact that you've won, I believe, eight of nine since that? Carla, you want to take that one first? Mm, I would just say, I mean. It was for sure hard to go through those two games and to get our confidence rattled, but um, it just made us figure out who we are, who we are, and made us dig, dig even deeper than we were digging before. Uh, it made us be uh, grittier. It made us work harder, pay attention to the little things, and made us play with each other better. And I think those two losses really flipped our season around. And I mean, we became a better team and better teammates and we just started fighting for everything. Kelsey, can you also answer? Thank you. Oh yeah. Um I would say those two losses really it didn't really bring us down, but it showed us that we can be a lot of a better of a Miami team. Um that we can work together. We can fight harder than we fought in those two games. Um it helped us to be, like Carla said, more gritty and more appreciative of the game and take every game seriously. Thank you. Okay, back to the room, Mitchell here. Yeah, Coach, um, you, you guys have beaten, you know, the past three days, kind of three very different teams um, in terms of the style and personnel that they play. Um, and, and NC State is going to, you know, bring bring its own challenges. What what kind of challenges are you, I guess, kind of preparing for against against NC State? Uh, I'd love to have that game plan ready, but uh, <laughs> I, I don't. I was taking a shower. <laughs> um, I do know uh, you, you got to go east-west with your coverage with them a lot. You know, um, they spread you out so much. There's not a player you can help off of, and so you've, you've got an incredible post player. Um, but boy, does that ball move east-west really well. And so that's gonna, we're going to have to really um, get our legs back tonight and um, really understand the personnel scout because if there's any, any chink in the armor at all, uh, for each particular player, they have a bunch of phenomenal players, but if they have one little bit that gives Miami an advantage and gets us to that, instead of an almost, it gets us to a, to a win, we got to find it. 
And this, our team has been incredible with the scouting report, just incredible. And my staff, let me tell you what, this is, you know, it, <laughs> this is hard. This is hard. I mean, and, and the way it went, you play in the afternoon, the evening, evening, and then flip, and now we flip again to noon tomorrow. It, that's hard on a staff. Um, and, um, um, you know, I have Beth Dunkerberger on my staff who's been a head coach for years. I have Shanice Johnson who was an All-American for me, and Fitzroy Anthony who's my rock. I mean, he's just been incredible. And so the three of them all bring something else. But we got a heck of a task ahead of us, and we got, what is that, how many hours we got to do it? We got to get to work. We do. It's going to be very, very hard. Uh, I don't think so. Um, not much, not much. And we rotate the scouts, but I just said it's Coach Dunkenberger scout, and I said don't leave Dunk on an island now. And they were like, I mean, they were insulted I even said that. Like, they're so together. They looked at me like, why would you think we would do that to Dunk? Like, we're here. Like, so it was great. I have, a, I have an amazing staff. They're quality people. Okay, over here on the left. Yeah, I just wanted to follow up on that. Like, the last game was on January 9th. How much can you rely on the scout from that game coming into this one? Remember, too, I believe, and I might be wrong, I think we were supposed to play Louisville, and then whammo, it became NC State. So I, uh, I was saying to my staff, I'm like, I don't really remember preparing for them. And they were like, because we were prepared for Louisville. And that's two years in a row that we were supposed to play Louisville, and it swapped out and became NC State on a blink of an eye. So maybe, and we played pretty well, so maybe I should just go to bed, <laughs> get some rest. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? All right, thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>